The world of image generation is being transformed by the newly released model Flux. In this video, we will look at how to use Flux and another a library called AI Toolkit, which simplifies model fine tuning to generate images of the characters or any particular styles that you wish to. Last night, AI Toolkit released a particular gradual version, which makes it super simple to fine tune your AI model and uh, we will fine tune this on Java Labs, uh, GPU Cloud Platform, which makes it super simple to start a Jupyter Lab or VS Code and fine tune your favorite AI models. Let's uh, start by creating an instance. We will start with a Configure instance. Let's say Run Cloud. Uh, I'll pick up an RTX 6000 Ada GPU instance, and let's pick up something like 300 GB. And for this example, we will train it on Marcus Data, a famous YouTuber. The instance will come up in like less than five to ten, five to ten seconds, but the Comfy UI itself will take some time. The reason for that is Comfy UI instance on Java Labs comes with a lot of nodes and a lot of model weight slower we try to load them all for you so that you can have a smoother process, uh, which actually results in some penalty for the start times for the server to get started. But mostly it will be up in one or two minutes. So mostly it won't be a problem. So the Comfy is getting started. Uh, we really don't need Comfy UI for this. So what we will do is, uh, so this is what we are trying to achieve. By default, the Flux model, which is one of the best open source models. The three versions of it, one is the fully paid one. You can consume it through their API or through some of the partners like Replicate, uh, uh, File.a. Some of them are there who have partnered with them and you can ex use that as an API. There is a dev version, which you can use it for all non-commercial purposes. Uh, if you're a researcher, you want to do something as a hobby, you want to push the research, I don't know what exactly it means, you can use that model. And then there is a uh, snail or something called, I'm not sure yeah, what it's, it's pronounced. It's yeah, what it matters is that's the Apache 2 open source version, which you're free to use or change anything. But for this one, we use dev, uh, because at least it's mentioned in the repo that dev offers the best results. But Tamim has been trying the open source version, which is actually good. Uh, probably in one of the next videos, we will see how to uh, fine tune the Senior open source version. Okay, uh, so our instance is up. The Comfy is also up, All right? So when you're launching Comfy instance, if you find it taking so much time, this is probably the reason why it's taking time. We actually don't need Comfy now, so let's go ahead and kill it, All right? We'll use this port for something else, which we'll come back in a minute. And the tool that we are gonna use for this is called AI Toolkit, which uh, I've been exploring it in the last few days, and there's one release that they did last night, which made it like super easy or probably one of the easiest ways uh, to fine tune a Flux model. Yeah. Basically it's a good idea. We'll look into it in a minute. So we have, we want to install all of these things. So let's open our text thing. Uh, let's put all the commands here. Let's bring it here and let's hide this. Now what we're going to do is we are going to clone this repository this all is going to take time. Yes. Uh, the biggest thing is going to be in downloading the Comfy UI. Not Comfy UI, the Flex yes. model. Yeah. Since we're going to use dev. Uh, it's a 23 GB. Right. So basically what we're doing is we're creating an environment. And then we're installing the requirements. Probably what we'll try to do is we'll try to add it as a new framework so that you can uh, just skip all these steps probably in the coming days. So we're creating a new environment, we're activating it. You can actually run this as a, comp as a script instead of doing this. Okay, uh, it's gonna take some time for this to install. So let's wait for a few minutes and then start it. It's taking some time to install. When we are doing this, in case you have mixed what is Flux and why you should care about it, we have returned two blogs about it, which I would take a moment to recommend you. 
recommend it for you. It. Uh, one is how to run it on Comfy UI. The second one is how to run it in plain old Jupyter Labs. Okay. Uh, so, so in the earlier videos, we saw how stable diffusion was transforming image generation for quite some time. There was something internal going on with stable diffusion. So stability, the company stability, which is behind stable diffusion models. Uh, some of the core researchers of the company are no more associated with them. They started this new company called Black Forest Labs. They released this new model uh, probably a month. I think it's a month old. Yeah, it's a month, right? Uh, and they released actually three versions. The Pro, which we discussed, it's like completely a uh, uh, jail model. Uh, you have to pay for everything that you do. Dev is kind of uh, explore, but don't use it for commercial use cases. Anything which results in you making money, don't use it. Uh, the other one is the Schnell model, which is the Apache 2.0 license model, which you can play with, right? Why this model is so important is it generates uh, photorealistic images in almost four steps, and it's really good at text, and they finally figure out the fingers, <laughs> right? So look at this example, right? Uh, the flux, this, and even this image, the first image that you see, is generated by Flex just using Throt, right? That's really cool. Uh, basically, what I did is I found some image on the internet. I wanted an image similar to that, so I went to Claude. I said, create a prompt that has all the background, create a Flux, and I got this. There are like more examples, like Jarvis Labs is the best. Uh, it, it's basically how to use this and the reasons for why it was so good. There are two challenges in this. One is the model is too heavy. It's like 23 gig. So you typically need something like 24 gig or 48 gig, something like an A5000 or A6000 or a 800s are usually suitable for these models. I hope the download will be done. Like yes. Yes, it's done, right? Once it's done, we still have to do two steps uh, before we get another magic. Yes. Okay, one is you have to log in the way so this is a gated model like i told you so for any gated model so one of the common issues that people who use java slabs or in the AI space feel is most of these libraries try to download a model but if it does not have an api token hacking face is going to block you for example all the llama 3 models from meta or gated models so in order for you to download you need to log in into the hugging face and accept the terms in this case, I've already accepted the terms. Basically, if you have not, uh, what you have to do is say flux, probably dev. Uh, it's, uh, oh, shit. Flux, just go for flux. Okay, flux job. If you have not logged in, you should see something like this. All right? You have to log in and say, I agree to whatever you say. So once you do that, uh, you should be able to download them or else by either clicking on it. The other thing you can do is go to access tokens and create a new token. Or you can use one. In this case, I'll just say YouTube demo. I just need read access. I don't want write access. You want to create a token with write access in case you wish for the final model to be uploaded to Hacking Face. In my case, I don't want it. I'll just use the Chavez Lab storage. So, I just took the token, entered it, and say, why? Okay, it's going to tell me something, but login successful. Now, let me go and do the last step, which is Python Flux Training UI. Right. It's going to do two things. One is it's going to start a radio server on this GPU instance, and it's also going to give you a new URL, which we'll not use it for now. Uh, Let's go to, oh, okay. I thought we killed the Comfy UI instance, right? We don't want to use this. If you want to use it, you can use it. It should work, but I have not used it. So what I usually do is, uh, I just kill the Comfy UI instance. This is also something which you can do. Let's say when you're using Comfy UI on JavaScript, something is not working. What you can do is, do PSO of an ops. You see this part here. Okay, it's not fully visible. Let's do this again. So if you see this thing, which means it's running. If you don't see it, that means it's not running. 
it's running and I want to bring it down. I say kill hyphen nine and do this. So okay, I you just hit. kill hyphen nine and put the process ID which is 89 or 85. I think it's 85. Okay. Now let's just check if it's killed. Yes, so finally we can kill now. <laughs> now let's not start it. Okay, now let's go and uh, start the radio app. Which is probably one of the easiest way to fine tune flex has all date. Okay, so now we have it started on six over six. Why it should start on six over six is uh, our platform is listening on six over six. Whatever is being served on six over six comes in this endpoint. Let's wait for a few seconds for it to load. Okay. Now we are good. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want uh, Laura. Let's see Paul Marcus. Maybe you can use like MKVHD or something. Yeah. Uh, now let's get to the data set and select all these images. Oh, it accepts WebP. Okay. Now the best thing with that is with any of these tools, you have to caption your data set, which is slightly uh, tricky process, not very complicated, but tricky process. I love this uh, feature that this AI toolkit has, which is add AI captions with Florence 2. They use this Florence 2, which is algorithm, which converts images to text. And uh, to do that, the first thing you do is download the model, uh, which is around like 1.5 GB. So wait for some time for it to download. So app is here. So once it's download, it's going to generate captions. So when, one more thing which uh, I would highly recommend to do is when you click on these Gradio things, it's going to take time for it to respond. So don't do double multiple clicks. Instead of that, what you do is go to this Jupyter Lab and look at what is happening in the logs. That will give you a better clarity of whether it's happening or not. All right. Now we have comments also. A man standing in front of a desk, blah, blah, blah. And then it has the trigger word that is pushed at the end. This word, this it's like a placeholder. It's going to be replaced by the word you see here. All right. Once we have all these things, uh, there's one thing which you would ideally want to change, which is click on the advanced options. And if you're is using a GPU which does not have 24 GB or which or which does not have uh, more than 24 GB, you have to keep it enabled. But in this case, we have something with 48 GB. Uh, or if you use a H100, it comes with 80 GB. You can choose whichever you want. Disable this low VRAM so it's slightly faster. And say, start training. Okay. We got this warning started training locally. Now, let's go and look at it. First thing it's doing is it's downloading all the model weights. Then it'll start the training process. So we'll not really wait for the training process to complete because it takes anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour for 1,000 steps. So what we will do is, uh, once your model is trained, you would have it in the outputs directory. So here I have a different uh, safe tensor, but here the name for you will change whatever Laura name you give. You'll find that safe tensor. So what we do is, copy those safe tensors to the LoRa's folder under models, under ComfyUI. Once you do that, you have to go and start the ComfyUI server. The way you start the ComfyUI server is, so this is the command you use to start the ComfyUI because you remember we killed it at the start. You start it. In this case, it's already running uh, and you see the ComfyUI with the model weights here. When you do it for the first time, the LoRa, if the ComfyUI is already running, it may have not recognized it. So what you should be early doing is going and hitting the refresh button, uh, which will bring in any of the new models in place. Then all we need to do is play with the prompts. Okay. Uh, so we do like uh, give you the this uh, particular comfy workflow link in the description. So go and check that. Got it. The LoRa you can download it. And you can play on your local uh, machine, or you can do whatever you want. Uh, the other thing you do is, let's say you want some inspiration for prompts. There are multiple platforms. One such platform is Lexica. Let's open Lexica and let's pick up any image that you want. Let's say we want 
It's not a god. <laughs> Let's see what he, how he looks. Uh, let's put it like this and say we have to play with it still. Oh, uh, what is this? Mar Arca Ian. Okay. Let's see what happens. One eternity later. Oh, did a nice. pretty decent job, I would say. Right. So let's make Marcus do some decent marketing for us <laughs> in his old age. Uh, holding. I la Java slaps right, and let's start it. Let's see what happens. Okay, what happened? He has a small car. That oh, my! Nice. I love Java slaps. Thanks, Marcus, for promoting us. Go to tip. Okay, so that's the way you find the flux model. So, is there something you want to add here? So basically, like. In this workflow, you can see there is like no negative prompts. So the Plex model is only on trained on positive prompts. So yeah, you don't that's need one to thing be... which I was surprised. I was telling that what is the negative prompt here? Yeah, he was. I was telling you that Flux does not need it. There's one more thing which I was surprised was I tried dev. I tried the Snail model usually. I did not try the dev model because of the non-commercial license. I was like surprised. Why does it take so much of time for the image generation? It turns out the open source model, the Snail model. Actually, generates a really good image in four steps, but this one needs anywhere between 20 to 30 steps. Uh, that's one of the reasons you find it slow. If you try it with the snail model, it uh, generates good result in four to five steps. But with this, you have to play with those numbers. That's one thing you have to do. Yeah. Uh, hope you like this video. Uh, if you have a GPU uh, at your house, try it. In case you don't have one, spin one in Jarvis Labs. I hope you love it both the video and the platform. In case you want a video on a different topic, please let us know in the comments. I know that we have not been making much videos lately because we have been working on a lot of different features, making the product very faster. Hope we have more time uh, for another year and we'll be making a lot more videos. Hope you all enjoy it. Share it with your friends uh, and support us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.